and the following resolution standing in my name. Whereas under section 17 of the Health and Citizen Security Levy, number 16 of 2023, the Act, it's provided that the Minister of Finance may, by order published in the Gazette, amend the schedules of the Act. And whereas it's further provided under section 17 of the Act, that an order made under that section of the Act is subject to an, an affirmative resolution of Parliament. And whereas the Minister of Finance seeks approval of the draft health and citizen security levy, amendment of schedules 1, 2, and 3 order to amend schedule 1, 2, and 3 of the Act by an affirmative resolution of Parliament 2. In the case of schedule 1, include the following imported goods Customs Tariff Chapters 25, salt, sulfur, sulfur, earths, and stone, plastic material, lime, and cement. Chapter 29, particles and articles thereof. Delete the following imported goods, Customs Tariff Chapters 88, aircraft, spacecraft, and parts thereof. Chapter 89, ships, boats, and floating structures. Chapter 29, special transactions. In the case of Schedule 2, delete the following services. Sale of motor vehicles, other financial services, other activities ancillary to financial services. In the case of Schedule 3, under Part 1 of Paragraph 1, Relation Chapter 17, change sugars to sugars. Relation Chapter 44, change organic to organics. Delete and exempted goods, the following customs tariff, chapter 39, plastics and articles thereof. Include exempted goods, the following customs tariffs, chapter 49, printed books, newspapers, pictures, and other products of printing industry, manuscripts, typescripts, and plans. Replace the exempted goods specified under part one, paragraph two. Include as exempted goods, goods under tariff heading 7701, 4702 and 90.18 and 90.22 pertaining to medical equipment and parts thereof and goods under chapter 85 and other chapters pertaining to security equipment. Be it resolved that Parliament by affirmative resolution approves the draft health and citizen security levy amendment of schedules 1 and 3 order which amends schedules 1 and 3 of the Act. 2. In the case of schedule 1 Include the following imported goods, tariff, customs tariff, chapters, chapter 25, salt, sulfur, earths, and stone, plastic materials, lime, and cement. Chapter 49, plastic and articles thereof. Delete the following imported goods, customs tariff, chapter 88, aircraft, spacecraft, and parts thereof. Chapter 89, ships, boats, and floating structures. Chapter 99, special transactions. B, in the case of Schedule 2, delete the following services, sales of motor vehicles, 19, other financial services, other financial services, activities except insurance and pension funding activities, 25, other activities, auxiliary financial services in the activities. <coughs> In the case of Schedule 2, delete the following services, sale of motor vehicles, 19, other financial services, activities except insurance and pension funding activities, other activities and auxiliary to financial service activities. <coughs> in the case of Schedule 3, under Paragraph 1, Paragraph 1, in relation to Chapter 17, change sugars, sugars to sugars, in relation to Chapter 44, Change organic to organics. Delete and exempted goods the following customs tariff chapter. Chapter 49. Plaster and articles thereof. Include exempted goods the following customs tariff chapter. Chapter 49. Printed books, newspapers, pictures and, pictures and other products of the printing industry, manuscript type scripts and plans. Replace the exempted goods specified under part 1, paragraph 2. Include and exempted goods a. Goods on the tariff headings for the 701 to 4702, 19.18 to 19.22, pertaining to medical equipment and parts thereof, and goods on the chapter 85 and other chapters pertaining to security equipment.
Mr. Speaker, when I asked, when, cabinet, when Parliament approved the health and security levy, Mr. Speaker, since it was a new tax, we knew that there would be need to review it, revise it, to look at it, to fine tune it, Mr. Speaker. Because we made a point that the tax was not on food, it was not on medical equipment, it was not on medical supplies, and it was not on security, security equipment. We made that point, Mr. Speaker. And we also made the point that at the level of importation, the 2.5% would be, would be imposed at customs, Mr. Speaker. Since then, we've had discussions with the Chamber of Commerce, and I think that we all understood why the health and security levy had to be imposed. We understood, Mr. Speaker, and we also agreed that the government would make it possible for people who were not given the privilege of being VAT exempt or VAT zero rated, we will add them to it, Mr. Speaker. And I'll come back in a while with another resolution, Mr. Speaker, and where you see that the government has kept its promise, Mr. Speaker. So what we're doing is a, is a simple amendment to, to, to the schedule to include some goods for the health and security levy, which we inadvertently left out the, the, the last time, to include them, Mr. Speaker, and to remove some which were, which were included in error, Mr. Speaker. There, there, there is no devil in, in, in that, Mr. Speaker. All it does, it just looks at certain goods like it, uh, things like printed books, newspapers, pictures, etc. Et These things, Mr. Speaker, they are already they are already exempted from from VAT, so we have to exempt them from the health and security levy. So, Mr. Speaker, all, all we're saying, if we just we're looking at, at, at the schedule to to clean it up, and we, we, we may have to come back because. It's a new levy. There'll be need for changes. We may have to come back when we look into it and we notice what, after further discussion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker and, and I just want, want to make a point. There's, there's a point, Mr. Speaker, where some people say they don't have enough time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when the Minister of Finance, regardless of who he or she is, when the Minister of Finance stands in his honorable house and he reads a budget statement, Mr. Speaker, that is the policy of the government. And there's no excuse, Mr. Speaker, if you don't read it, then there's no excuse if you don't follow what the Minister of Finance says, regardless of who he is and regardless of whether you support him or not. When the Minister of Finance stands in the Honorable House and he reads a budget, that becomes the law of the country. So there can be no excuse, Mr. Speaker, to say that we, we were not prepared. We expect that from people, from some people, but I, I do not want to hear that we were not prepared it came to sudden, Mr. Speaker. That was said in the budget statement that it will be implemented from the 2nd of July. We, we yielded and we pushed it to the 2nd of August. And we've spoken to the Revenue, you said that some businesses who still have issues we will not be dogmatic We'll give them some time so they can solve their issues. Because we want to help and we want to assist everyone, Mr. Speaker. We want this, but it, it can't be seamless because it's, it, it, the resolution and the levy deals with hundreds of goods, Mr. Speaker. So there will be time, so we have to come back to make changes, Mr. Speaker. So these are one of the times. Ask members to support this resolution.